Hi everybody, welcome to part one of my multiple videos on Monopoly. Uh, this is for an intermediate microeconomics class with no calculus. Uh, so this one is just introducing the monopolist's problem. We're going to talk about how they can solve for, how we can solve for their profits, producer surplus, consumer surplus, and any deadweight loss that will arise from the monopoly instead of comp competition. So there's a few things I'm going to have to give you in this problem. You need to know about your firm. We're going to give them a total cost function of 54 plus 2q squared. Uh, whatever cost function it is, you'll have to figure it out in your question when you read it. Marginal cost from this is just 4q. And let's say they have a demand curve for their product equal to 90, I guess this is an inverse demand curve, minus 1 half QD. And we want to use this information to calculate profit, surpluses, and deadweight loss. Well, to calculate profit, we need a few things. We need to know the, let's see, pi is our symbol for profit. I don't know why. But quantity times price minus average total cost. So P minus ATC is your average profit per unit. Multiply that by quantity, you get total profit. So we are going to need each of these three things. That's three steps on the way to calculating profit. And we'll need to do them all. So let's start with the quantity decision. How do we choose quantity? What's our monopoly quantity? Well, let's look at a graph, and we'll get a little bit of intuition from that. Let's see, there's our demand curve, uh, marginal revenue curve, 90, 180, 90. Obviously not to scale, because I'm not that cool. You can look at one of those fancy other videos where they do everything on their computers. Average total cost. Average variable cost. Okay, there's a big mess up there. What do we do with that? Well, if we're maximizing profit, we want to capture every good, every sale, where our marginal revenue is greater than our marginal cost. Because on each of these sales, we bring in more money than we spent. What we do not want to do is sell goods where it costs us more to make them than the money we bring in. And so we're going to be looking for this little sweet spot where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. By doing that, we will capture every transaction that increases our profit and we will not take on any of those transactions that decrease our profit. So step one, for finding our quantity is to find the quantity associated with this point. So we're going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, which is the same thing in all of our industry structures, even in perfect competition. Let's see, we know marginal cost is 4Q, but what's marginal revenue? Crap, we don't know that yet either. Uh, so here's my reminder. Your marginal cost curve is very related to your demand curve. Sorry, your marginal revenue curve is very related to your marginal, to your demand curve. Marginal revenue has the same equation as the demand curve with one change. And that is that you double the slope. So that comes out of the calculus. You don't have to know exactly where that comes from. If you want to talk to me about it, we can. But you can take it to the bank. The marginal revenue curve will always have double the slope. So in this case, that's 90 minus QD for your marginal revenue. So let's plug that in up here. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. 90 minus Q equals 4Q. Well, that means that 5Q is equal to 90, and 
and that Q is equal to 1 8. Oops. Q is equal to 18. All right, so we got that. Let's store that and keep it over here for later. Next, we need P. Well, we're a profit maximizer, which means we want to make as much money as we can at whatever quantity we sell. So the most money that we can make at our profit maximizing quantity is where that quantity meets the demand curve. So when I'm looking for price, my step two is plug my blue quantity, my profit maximizing quantity, into the demand curve. And by doing that, I will find the highest price that I can possibly charge in order to sell 18 units of my good. Wow, this is really not to scale, so I'm gonna erase this 90 over there. That's okay. So let's see. I wanna set, put 18 in my demand curve. Let's see, so that's P is equal to 90 minus 1 half times 18 is 90 minus 9 is 81. So I'm gonna store that over here for later. And now I need my average total cost. Average total cost, we want it at the quantity, and so we're just gonna solve for it right there. The point where 18 feeds into our average total cost function. So we need average total cost. Total cost, don't forget, was equal to 54 plus 2q squared. Well, average total cost is total cost over q. That's 54 over q plus 2q squared over q. Oops, that's supposed to be a 4 there. It is 54 over q plus 2q. Substitute in 18 for that. 54 over 18 plus 2 times 18. And you get 39. Right, let's store that. And then we got to start erasing stuff because we got a lot going on. So with our quantity solved for, our price solved for, and our average total cost solved for, we are ready to calculate the monopolist profit. And we will just do that by substituting all of those three things we solved for into our profit function up here. So I want to put these into that function. And so that's what I'm going to do. Let's see. So Profit for our monopolist is equal to 18 times P, which is 81, minus 39 for average total cost. And all this comes out to be 756. And there we got it. Monopoly profit. Already done. Let's see, I'm going to populate a few of these. 18, that's 81. That is uh, that's going to be seventy two. I by the way, that seventy two I just got from plugging Q eighteen into our marginal cost function. So four times eighteen was seventy two, and our average total cost at eighteen was thirty nine. So it's really not to scale, but like I said, that's okay. This isn't an art class. If you want a pretty graph, go draw it yourself and make your own videos. All right, we got profit. Now, we need to calculate producer surplus. And producer surplus, its equation is very similar to profit. Uh, or at least we can write it very similar to profit. And it's Q times P minus AVC. So they're very similar measures. Both give you some sense of well-being for the firm. 
but they're measuring slightly different things. Profit includes the fixed costs, basically, whereas producer surplus only considers variable costs. Well, we already have Q and P, right? Q is 18, P is 81. We just need average variable cost. If we go up to our cost function, 54 is not a variable cost. There's no variable there. There's no letter you can plug in and have it be different numbers. It is 54 no matter what Q is. The 2Q squared, however, is a variable. You can have different values of Q and you'll get a different value. So our variable cost is 2Q squared. Whatever part has letters, right? Which means average variable cost is equal to variable cost over Q. 2Q squared over Q is just 2Q. So I'm going to take this average variable cost and plug 18 into it. 2 times 18 is 36. So the point where average variable cost hits, I'm supposed to be connected there, but my pencil's not working, uh, is 36. So let's see, let's substitute this stuff in now. Producer surplus is 18 times 81 minus 36, which comes out to be $810. Now, if I were to look at profit on this graph, it would be everything uh, below the price. Oops, I want to be in highlighter mode. It would be everything below the price and above the average total cost at the quantity that we sell. So all of this would be profit. If I want to do something similar with average variable cost, it would also add, let's see. so let's see, producer surplus, we'll make it be red and green. Everything below price and above the average variable cost is all producer surplus. So they're very similar, but producer surplus is always going to be a little more. So that said, next we want consumer surplus. And consumer surplus, this will be the same as it's been in a lot of our other stuff. We don't have to get fancy with it. Producer surplus, I gave you a new equation using the average variable cost because sometimes our marginal cost curve is going to be very nonlinear. Uh, but consumer surplus we can calculate in the traditional way. Below the demand curve, above the price. So consumer surplus in monopoly is equal to half times the base of that triangle, it's 18 units times the height of that triangle is nine units. So that comes to be just 81. Cool. Let me put producer surplus back on here. I shouldn't have erased it. Now we want dead weight loss. See, dead weight loss is this. What do I want to do? Yeah, this is really not to scale, it's throwing me off. Alright, so for our dead weight loss, we're looking to see where there are transactions that would benefit consumers and producers that don't happen. And we see those. Here, where the willingness to pay, as shown by the demand curve, is greater than the marginal cost. Both the firm and the consumer could be made better off if some of those units got sold at prices in that range. And so we need to, we need to find, lastly, this quantity. The quantity where the marginal cost meets the demand curve. 
And then we can calculate dead weight loss after that. So marginal cost is 4Q. Uh, the demand curve is 90 minus a half of Q. So this is 9 halves Q equals 90. Q is equal to 20. And now we can calculate dead weight loss. Dead weight loss is equal to 1 half times the base of that triangle, which is 2 units times the height of that triangle, which is nine dollars, whoops, nine dollars, one half times two times nine is just nine. And there you have it. You've been walked through fairly quickly how to calculate profit, producer surplus, consumer surplus, and deadweight loss. One last reminder, it will always hinge on the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. But for the rest of it, I'm gonna let you go back and forth through the video. Uh, I will have a second part coming up soon where this is compared to the perfectly competitive output. But for now, I think that's good enough. Thanks for watching.